Hey, I'm Ben Marshall, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect two Festool guide rails using the Festool guide rail connectors with nothing more than a flathead screwdriver, a nice straight edge, and your track saw. Stick around. Whether you're a hobbyist, a purist, or a professional woodworker, we all have the need to make long rips and cuts. Utilizing Festool's guide rail systems with their track saws, routers, and jigsaws, you can make long, straight, and well-aligned cuts using their guide rails. However, some of us are often limited by our ability to transport or store incredibly long guide rails, and so we need the use of different lengths of guide rails connecting them together to make those long rips. In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make sure that your two connected guide rails are perfectly aligned to make sure that you get those nice edges and rips. Now, some materials that you're going to need to get this process knocked out is obviously two Festool guide rails, the Festool guide rail connectors, some type of a straight edge, a, your track saw, and then a flathead screwdriver. Now, the great thing that I love about, the, about Festool and its ecosystem of tools is that often there are tools that have multiple uses. And so here I have the telescoping wings for the Fessel Capex trimming attachments. That is a great straight, straight edge. I have the stop ruler that is on the uh, Fessel MFT3. And I have the fence or the, uh, yeah, the fence from the Fessel CMS router table. So regardless of what Fessel items you have, there are often multiple uses in the tools that you can have and, and to do this process. So for today's video, I'm gonna be using the uh, uh, tel telescoping extension wing from the Fessel Capex trimming attachments. It's whenever you do this process, you want to have the longest reference that you can possibly get. And then obviously our track saw is just going to be there to, just to make sure that that there aren't any binds or or catches uh, after we get everything lined up. So the first step in this process is depending on what guide rails you have. This is just my way of doing it. It's there's no right or wrong way uh, when it comes to which which rail you want to connect first. I tend to connect the connectors uh, to the longest guide rail first, and that's just my, my way of doing it. It's not a right or wrong way, just my way. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip uh, the first guide rail over, take our guide rail connector, we're gonna insert the uh, guide rail connector in with the uh, screw tips uh, facing up, or the screw faces up. And whenever you tighten these down, you don't want to you don't want to over tighten these screws. You just want to tighten it until there's a little bit of resistance, and then stop, because these screws are made of steel. The guide rail is made of aluminum. If you crank down on these things too hard, you're going to dent the other side of the guide rail. And guess what? This is what your track saw glides or dents, or that's what it uses as a reference um, to make the cuts. So you want to make sure that you're not doing these too tight. So we get that first one done. We're going to flip it over. And then we're going to insert the other guide rail connector. Again, you want to have it until it's split kind of right down the middle, half on this rail, half of the other rail. And then again, we're going to tighten these two, um, these two connectors in. Now, whenever I go to align this, it's important that you are aware of which guide rail you've connected or which guide rail you've tightened the screws on first, because this is the guide rail that you're going to want to uh, reference using your straight edge. That'll make sense here in a second. So, we've got the first two connected. And now we're gonna marry the two guide rails. Now, whenever these guide rails are made at the factory, they're all made from the same length and then uh, Festool cuts them to the appropriate lengths at the factory. Now, sometimes the guide rails are cut with a perfectly 90 degree edge, sometimes they're not, like a little bit off. So it's just good practice whenever you marry these things together that you don't want to butt them up uh, together. You want to have a little bit of a gap, maybe maybe a one millimeter gap between your rails, and that's just to account for any um, any errors that there may be on the edges of your of your guide rails. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our straight edge. Again, I'm using the uh, telescoping attachment from the tr Festool trimming attachments, and I've seen people reference. Uh, the outside edges of the of the the guide rails whenever they try to check alignment and uh, I think that depending on the, the condition of your guide rails that could give you bad results because people can misman or mishandle these guide rails or accidentally drop them 
the the edges here are not used for any kind of a reference, or at least for the track saw they're not. Um, and they can easily throw your alignment off. And so if I were to take my straight edge and use the outside edge as a reference to make sure that my guide rails are in alignment, uh, again, they could be off a little bit. And when using the track saw, the track saw uses this middle rib or this middle rail as the reference for the cutting surface. It doesn't use the edge of the splinter guard. It doesn't use the outside edge of the guide rail. This is what the, the, the track saw uses to guide itself along the rail. So that's what we want to reference our straight edge against because that's what the saw is going to reference against. So again, I'm going to take our straight edge. We're going to align it on this T-track right here in the middle. And because this is my reference guide rail, this is the part that I'm going to pull pressure against to try to get it aligned. And you, you could have this, this straight edge uh, straddling halfway on both guide rails. I tend to favor a little bit more on the, uh, the untightened side of the side that we haven't tightened the screws on. And that's just because I want to have a reference point that is further out uh, from the joint to make sure that I have the best chances of getting this thing in alignment. So I'm going to use my thumbs. They're going to be on the back side of the rail. And then my index fingers are going to pull pressure towards the rail. So I'm pinching um, my straight edge between the T-track channel and my fingers. And I'm looking from here towards this gap that is at the very edge of my straight edge. And so again, maintaining positive pressure down here, I'm going to lightly lift up or shift over the guide rail until it is just touching the edge of my straight edge reference and my straight edge guide. And once I have that in place, again, I'm going to switch hands, maintaining positive pressure on the guide rail. And I'm going to tighten these two top screws. And again, it doesn't have to be overly tight. As soon as I feel resistance, I stop because I don't want to put any dents or mars inside of here. And as I flip this over, I'm making sure that I have the guide rail fully supported. Uh, and that's really important because I don't want it, I don't want it to, I don't want this guide rail to move up or down based off the surface that I have this laid on. So again, you want to make sure that you have nice support underneath. Tighten the ones that are on the bottom and I'm going to bring my uh, rail up again and just making sure that, that again, that I have, um, that this T-track is touching my reference point at the very end here. Set that aside. I'm going to take my track saw, set it down. Okay, I want to retighten my cams to make sure that the tolerances are, are proper. So right now I have it completely loosened and you can hear that lateral tolerance in the saw. So I'm going to tighten my two cams back here. Again, just until I feel resistance in my fingertips to make sure that I have a good glide going down the track. And again, I know that I have good alignment because my track saw can move down freely. And I know that this guide rail is properly aligned because I was able to use a nice reference system. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions about getting your guide rails in alignment, or if you've seen other, other ways of doing it, make sure you drop it in the comments below. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for giving your time to watch this video. I hope it uh, is helpful for you now and in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.